Moving on, it was a request of this committee as well. We have trustees of the trust fund come in and to explain how they handle the funds they handle and what funds they handle, much in the same way we had Mike Schroeser come in at our last meeting and explain the funds that were under his control. I have, <coughs> good evening, I have two handouts except that I didn't count correctly the number of members of the committee, so I made. We're missing three tonight. So I made 12 copies. Is that Perfect. So Perfect. I'll make copies and I'll make sure the others get them. And so that you know, I, you know. Jamie Silverdick is the chairman <coughs> and Steve. I reached out to him and he was more than happy, although I promised him 7.30 and I broke my promise already. So. I apologize for that, Norm. That's all right. Uh, to my left is Steve Falzone, who's a member of the uh, trustee of the trust funds and our secretary and clerk and has been for several years. Uh, the trustees of the trust funds manage uh, the trust for the town and the school district. And briefly, uh, we have uh, three types of trust funds. We have a common trust fund account with about a little more than a half a million. We have the capital reserve trust funds which have a million four. And we have the real estate trust fund which has uh, 18 million. And the objective is for the fund, the income from the funds to go to the town or to the, the beneficiaries of the trust. In the case of the common trust funds, these are made up of poor trusts, which were money left for uh, poor folk. There's three of those. There are library trust funds, which were created for specific purposes over time, and there's four of those. There's cemetery trust funds, which have perpetual care involved, and there's 70 of those. There is a cemetery revenue trust fund, which is in the sale of, uh, of burial plots, and that's uh, one, one fund that's got about a half a million dollars. And then there's specific purpose trust funds, like the Camel Sports Scholarship Funds. And these are co-managed under one account. Uh, the uh, common trust fund, they, they will last a long period of time, so we're just generating income approximately about 4% and when the money goes to the individual uh, trust beneficiaries. The common capital reserve trust funds are generally money that comes in and goes out. Uh, the, the town might provide us with uh, money for uh, equipment reserves or the, there is money set aside for um, special ed both from the high school and for uh, the the um, excuse me, the high school in the Hampton school district and in there's money uh, for the uh, Hampton uh, village district then uh, we have uh, money that's in there for the town roads or DPW equipment Normally that and compensated leave, that money comes in and then there's a request for it to go out. So those are in short term investments and so that they're readily able to be liquidated and provided to the, uh, to the town as requested. The, the bulk of our effort by our committee is devoted to the real estate trust funds. When we became involved with the trust funds back in, uh, at least during our tenure for the majority of the board members of five of us, which are made up of primarily investment professionals and people who are very knowledgeable about uh, professional investing. Uh, the the uh, trust funds had come through a very difficult period of time uh, with the collapse of the financial markets and had uh, dropped down to a low of $13 million. And we eventually replaced the uh, the investment advisor and one of our uh, members on our uh, board, Warren Mackinson, um, resigned from the board, not resigned, but his, his tenure ended. He didn't run again and he applied to be the investment advisor along with uh, quite a few other investment firms and we picked his firm uh, 
not only was it the least expensive for all professional fees, and I think Warren was doing this as part of uh, a, a, uh, a service to the community. He's charging us one-tenth of one percent for his services, which are paid quarterly based on last year's total value of the funds. And he also provides uh, the bookkeeping that we need in order to uh, maintain all our records and keep uh, our reports to the, uh, to the state. I find that uh, that value of, I think we pay Warren about uh, eighteen to $20,000 a year, uh, for his firm, Mackinson and Company, and that the value of the bookkeeping is probably worth that. I mean, we're getting, we're getting tremendous value for, uh, for, the, for the money. Uh, the town is uh, happy to say the, the value of that trust has gone, with the exception of maybe uh, we had a couple hundred thousand of additional money put into it from the sale of real estate. Our value of our uh, of our portfolio right now stands at eighteen million three hundred thousand, up five million over the last few years. And uh, I give credit to a timeliness, a, a good market at the same time, some very good investment decisions made by our professionals who are advising us. Because we have a board of uh, very knowledgeable people in, and uh, in the professional community, they're able to challenge our investment advisors with ideas and with uh, um, approaches that would increase our yield uh, to the town without uh, taking any undue risks. And we're averaging a little under 4% right now. And the town gets a check every month um, based on whatever the flow of cash that comes in. And the uh, I think we generated 600 and so on thousand dollars, 650,000 last year. And I think we will continue that way. It should be a little bit more this year, probably 680, something like that. And that's all used to offset the tax rate. In the past, uh, we've had requests to lend the money to the town, but the town can generally borrow the money at a much lower rate, tax-free basis, and it doesn't make sense to the left hand to the right hand. It just would be a, a bookkeeping transaction. Uh, we have uh, n no more. We, we have approximately uh, 40 to 45 percent of our money in equities, and the rest of it is in fixed income um, investments. And these, they're all investment grade, and we very carefully monitor everything that we do. We, because we're long-term investors, we don't panic because the market went up or down 200 points one day. I mean, we did that when, in 2008 and 9, when the market was was so volatile, we wound up meeting monthly, and then as we calmed down a little bit with the the vicissitudes in the market, we have decided to meet quarterly because when you're making a decision, you have to ride the emotions that take place in the marketplace. And so far, uh, we've done extremely well. When we get near 5% in any particular investment due appreciation, we'll pair that investment back when no investments allowed to be, individual investments allowed to be greater than 5%. So we have, for example, 40 different securities in a real estate uh, trust fund. We have only five in the, in the capital reserves and ten in the common trust funds. And we uh, report, uh, we have our own individual reports that are, that are prepared for us quarterly. Uh, the majority of the information is posted online. We have our own website. All our information is available. I'm not sure we put the individual stocks that we have online, but we're always willing to share that information with the public. We have our meetings quarterly here on Mondays. And uh, we rarely get a visitor from the public, and they're always welcome to just join us and be part of part of the action. So that happens periodically. And uh, so far, I'm, I'm very happy to be part of that the team, and we are. Uh, I think we're, I, I'm very pleased with our results so far. And we, we have all our monies deposited with a savings bank, a federal savings bank called National Advisors Trust Company, which is located in Kansas. It's, uh, it's really owned and, uh, owned and operated by independent investment advisors who have, who have invested in it. Warren is one of them. There's no fee for the services that the trust company provides because when they do sell a series of um, 
of mutual funds, etc., and that's how they get paid when they sell a mutual fund or a product that they might be carrying. They get a fee from the uh, sponsor company, and if and if we're buying something that they're not representing, then we'll pay a transaction fee. We do some transactions during the year. We'll, we'll move it. We just went into investments of individual bonds at the request of uh, some of the members of the board. And so we paired back on some other investments. We had some gains on those. The gains get reinvested back in and to generate more income for the uh, for the town. And uh, uh, Mackinson and Company gets no fee, for no, no um, uh, service fee at all from uh, the National Advisors Trust. And as he, Warren has indicated, if, if that ever happened, he would donate the money to any fee he gets to the library. So it's not a... It's not a for-profit uh, situation, and uh, and I think that's. I mean, we we comply with all the various state laws. We go up for training periodically as needed, and uh, we have very lively and enjoyable meetings among our trustee members. So that's it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Going to, if you don't mind, go around the table. Bob? I just had a couple questions. Would you be better off with more flexibility in terms of the bond equity percentages than having the rigid requirement, 60% bonds, 40% equities? Well, we have flexibility within that. We have, we, we can, uh, I think that we can, in our investment policy, we have some, some room to maneuver in that, in those percentages so that we, we can increase our, let me get the investment policy out here, here someplace. Um, we have targets and we can, for example, we can go with fixed income, our target allocation is 55% and I said 64%, or we can go between 35 and 70% as we choose to. In equities, we can go between 25 and 45 so we do have the flexibility we need. And when you, the only distribution of income from the equity side would be stock dividends? Correct. So the stock portion in a good market could grow dramatically, but right. you wouldn't be distributing it? No, we would not. How does the town benefit at some point? Well, they, they hopefully the rise in the dividends from that, or if we reach a point where we decided to make a change in a particular investment. We did recommend to our investment advisor that there were some investments that were not yielding enough money and would he swap those out for other ones that would give us a higher yield than he did. So we were able to realize some of the appreciation and the value of those investments and reinvest them in something else that would give us a better yield. So we do look at that periodically. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Well done. Thank you. I'm all set. I didn't know you were coming in. I don't think I'd seen it on the agenda uh, or plan or in the meeting before. So it was a pleasant surprise to oh, see well. a friend and a wonderful member of the community, both of you. Mm -hmm. And I think you're doing a wonderful job over there. 18 million. I can remember saying 13 million and it's going down every day. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have. No, I, I'm not going to get into the whole accounting thing. I have no con conception of that. But I'm, just, I'm, I'm looking at this, the one that just needs to be passed around. Yeah. And on the front, it shows the 2013 year end balance. Market value is 17,955.74. Right? Yeah. If I turn the page over, I look at 12,31,2013, market value 18,064.369. There's a slight difference. I yeah, 113,000. I, I I haven't a clue. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm just yeah. And then the figure of net income. That's the quarterly net income. Is that the way that you that you show that? Well, yeah, here that's on that one page. That's right? quarterly. Each yeah. quarter. Right? right. And the total for 2013 was 648. Right? right. That's okay. correct. All right. Uh, the same thing we have at the end of every year. Yeah. The, the, the yeah, I'm uh, trying to read this thing. I have 331 at 1231. Okay. 
Victory Real Estate. The number that we reported for the uh, year end for our uh, for our MS10 was uh, 17 million 950 versus 18 18 uh, 18064. So I don't I really don't have a uh, I, don't, I don't have an explanation. Check it's crazy yeah. attention, I guess. Yeah. It must have gone up. Must have gone up. Something. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah. If it goes up, no problem. Only if it goes up. <laughs> Almost looks like that was the way the fees were taken out. Yeah, well, I'm saying, uh, I don't believe so. <laughs> it went up. That's went a good up. thing. That's all. So as long as it goes up, that's yeah, all they care about. That's a good thing. Thank you. Nice to say Richard is doing his job. Good. Good. <laughs> I know when I when I move stuff around, I have to if I have a gain, then I have to pay a tax on it. Right. Does the town have to? Okay, no, it's the government. You don't have to do. No, that. we're a nonprofit. That's so. great. <laughs> <laughs> Wish I could get away with that. No. Thank you very much for You're coming. Welcome. Thank you for your time from 13 to 18 million. Congrats. Good job. Thank you. Same here both of you for coming in tonight. Um, it helps to understand as we go down the road looking finance things that we have or yep. things that we need and um, to know where we are. And when we get the book, you know, this all stems from the book that we get in October and at the end of it all you see all these trust funds listed but we very rarely get the opportunity when we're in the budget rounds which was a good opportunity now to kind of take it apart. And, and thank you. We don't always do it every year, but we have new members on the board, and I, for one, appreciate both of you coming in tonight to go through this with us. Thank you. Um, I, thank you. Um, and thanks for coming in. Um, I just have, how often do we change around funds? You said you meet quarterly now. Are we changing funds around? Um, yeah, thank you, I'm sir. just worrying about the, you know, the, I call it commission or whatever when you change the funds when you pay the fee when you change funds around is this a, a common thing or just well we, we the the, um, the investment advisor has discretion to, to make changes without discussing with the board but generally yeah. they do uh, discuss it with the board their fee is set at the beginning of the year for the year, so they have no incentive if if the stock goes up or down. They, they, it's a fixed a fixed amount based on the total value of the portfolio at the end of last year. So. Oh, okay. All right, that makes that clear. There, thank you. Um, I just had one other simple question: Was do we still invest in any non-legal investments? Non-legal, meaning. Um, Let's say, for instance, we were um, invested in the town of Hampton, and the town of Hampton was no longer a legal investment. But because we had invested in it in the past, we don't have to move it anymore. Um, there are several towns that do this, that they just haven't updated it. Um, there's actually five or six reasons why you can have an end on. Well, I'm not, I'm not aware of any investment we have that... Because it, that yeah, because it should be reported at the end if you are, and I didn't no. see it at the end of the year. Yeah. We, we have investments that are uh, that are all in conformity with our investment policy, and the, we invest in mutual funds, and the majority of the mutual funds that we invest in, which are generally very high-grade mutual funds, uh, might have in their portfolio some investment that may not be investment grade, but it's it's only minimal. We always have uh, our the bulk of our portfolio is easily capable of being liquidated and is an investment grade product. Okay, that answers. Mm -hmm. Thank you. The only investment I haven't heard of that one. Anyway, uh, thank yeah. you, gentlemen, for your unpaid service to the thank town. You. I appreciate it. Um, and I assume you're not investing in a land or anything else I might consider to be illegal. No. <laughs> I, I, I believe that uh, anything that it, where U.S. policy is involved that where to invest or not, we are not in violation. Well, good, good. I thank you for, once again for your time, and I have no questions. Thank okay. you.
I have nothing, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> I see you, you pay uh, Warren Marcus in 10 basis points. Now, you invest in mutual funds. They have an expense ratio. Yeah. I don't see that. No, it's not here. I mean, we, we, once we made the investment, that's, that's uh, we're, well, getting net, right yeah. we're, we're getting net of their, of their fees when they pay their dividends. So The reason I'm asking is, before I retired, I had a 401k yeah. with T. Rowe Price. When I retired, I switched to Vanguard. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, I've got them in two funds, an S&P 500 and a long-term bond fund. And I, my expense ratio for the S&P 500 is five basis points. Mm -hmm. and, I'm, and I'm not investing $20 million or $18 million. You know, I'm just curious to see what your expense ratios are. I, I don't know. I don't know that I have that. Okay. Because uh, mo most of it. Yeah. Uh, what, what? We so might have. This is the question I asked last time. Yeah. This question has been asked before, so I don't know. So I may, uh, what is that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have it. I have it. I have it. Because Vanguard is owned by its investors. Some of the funds will have 20 basis points. We had asked this question at the, at the last. Each fund would have right here. Point zero one. I'm sorry. Point zero one. One basis point. Ten yeah. basis points. Point zero zero one. I'm sorry. Oh. One, one basis. One basis point. W which funds are those? That's total on the front. <laughs> I know what this question is. Ten. So I show it to me. So you get a return from a mutual fund, right? Is it they take their expenses out, so you're getting a yeah, natural you're getting a net, yes. net return. And then Warren charges 0.1 percent, right? His court is right. Okay. Part of his job is to pick which mutual fund out of the many thousands that you have. I know, I know. Each mutual fund has an expense mm -hmm. rate. Yeah, the Vanguard. I mean, there is no question that with that there is an additional cost okay. associated. Yeah, I, I mean, that's. But we we did invest in individual stocks uh, prior with the prior investment advisor, and we took some real hits on them. Yeah, so. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah the Vanguards are are the lowest in terms mm -hmm. of expense. Uh, yeah, I can see. 0 0.1 percent, 0 0.15, 0 0.2, whereas stability is at 1, 1.5, 1.2, no. <coughs> Anybody else in this set? Yeah, I have uh, okay. I, 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 page 8, Norm, of the yeah. pamphlet you put out. Yep. I see a $5,000 hit in 2013. Uh, is that, uh, yeah, yeah that's, uh, that's all because of the uh, inflation protected bonds that are there. I gave you my hand. Oh, no, oh wait a minute, I have it here. <laughs> yeah. right. You got it in your way. Yeah, 2013. There was. Um, and uh, up above it, it, it talks about. Uh, yeah, you know, the there was there was the the tips. Uh, tips and that yeah. was that what caused that? Yeah, basically, and it appears that that was the case. But we must be really in very, very conservative bonds there. We're, oh, extremely. Yeah, extremely. We, we are, I mean, for that particular investment, we're ahead $9,000. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. But the object is if that money's needed instantly, it's available. That's why people are, you know, that's why people are driven into the market. I mean, if you're retired today, you're not looking for a 1% return. No, you're not. 1.1, 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. You're not looking for that. Well, I, and that's one of the reasons we put these monies into uh, certain mutual funds, because if you put them in the bank at a CD, you get some ridiculously oh, yeah. low rate, oh, yeah. and it's that's not that's worth it. And, and in the history of the trust funds, that's what they did. They really didn't invest it. They just basically had it in CDs, et cetera, and there was good years, you'd get a lot of money, but nobody's dealing with the fact that the time value of money erodes the principal. So right. you need to cover the consumer price index, and in our case, we've covered for inflation and then some. I did take a look at your portfolio a few years ago, and it was yeah. really wide. 
yeah. you know, large cap, small cap. Yeah. I mean, you had all the eight or nine fronts covered. Yeah, we do. In terms of, yeah. of I, I we are we are just universally as a board very pleased with our our uh, performance of our advisors, and we hold them accountable. So. Yeah. Small growth, large yeah. growth. I mean, you've got the eight or nine or ten various waterfronts well covered, and they're yeah. a good good grade uh, yeah. funds that I can see. I really don't have any questions. I thank you for your information. You're welcome. Huh? No. I'm going to just back down here. We're not going to leave anybody out. Is there ever an advantage for the town to borrow from you for the short term loans anticipating taxes? Uh, I don't believe we have, we'd have to sell something to do it because we're not holding very much cash. And once again, the bank can, the, the town can probably borrow at a lower rate than what, what we're getting for a return. We, we, that that issue has been raised several times. Mm -hmm. Colin probably get three and a half percent. Yeah, they can they, they, they can pay if they pay that much. Some of those Colin bonds are fine. No, in terms of, of borrowing money, yeah. Tom. Mm -hmm. They they last last time they went out for uh, uh, the bonding of the uh, they got some very attractive rates for the uh, for the uh, mm -hmm. wastewater treatment plant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, guys. No. Question. Are there any more lease lots, or are they all gone? You know, the 99 leases, are they gone? I think there are a few left. There is some left. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I know. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 Is that right? I know yeah. this. What you they were just saying about the other day that they were already yeah. not paying the rent. There's at least three. 30? Not 30, just yeah. 30. Still 30. Yeah. 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 That's what I was going to say. I thought there were quite a few. Yeah. 30? So when, when the town forecloses and sells them, you know, we'll be. Thank you. <laughs> 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 okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Well, Mike, I just, I just well, wanted I to I mention that I got the two checks for the village district and I deposited them into the bank and I talked to the accountant and found out that I've got to keep that money segregated mm -hmm. away from the rest. So uh, thank you very well, much. Well, I'm glad we, we try to respond to you as uh, you quickly as we well. could. very well. Thank you very much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I've already spent most of it. Oh, wow. <laughs> I hope it was, uh, made the uh, village a better place. Most certainly will. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Steve.